one of my favorite racing stories in recent memory that I don't think anyone else has actually went and picked up on is how Danica Patrick's chocolate salty balls potentially ruined her racing career. Before we begin, a bit of a disclaimer. The story all happened like seven or eight years ago, and this was all settled out of court. It's just fun to talk about. This story happened seven or eight years ago, so you're definitely forgiven if you don't even remember this was a thing, because a lot of people don't. Um, but thankfully, it's really easy to bring you up to speed. Basically, the final few years of Danica Patrick's NASCAR Cup Series career, she was not sponsored by GoDaddy. She was sponsored by Nature's Bakery, which is just a random granola bar company. And things went okay for a few years, and then in early 2017, a few weeks before the Daytona 500, um, we basically woke up to a press release saying that Stuart Haas Racing was going to take Danica's primary sponsor to court because they weren't paying. That's it. You'd think this would be an otherwise really boring topic to cover because at the end of the day, all this boils down to is Danica's sponsor stopped paying, Stuart Haas Racing threatened to sue the sponsor, they settled out of court. It was basically out of the news cycle in like two months. That's it. What I'm going to present over the next couple of minutes today is that this random mundane story might actually deserve a closer look. I believe that this has something to do with why Danica chose to retire at the end of the 2017 racing season. As fans, we all kind of believe the narrative that Danica bowed out from racing gracefully after 15 or 16 years um, racing professionally, whether it be an IndyCar or NASCAR, um, and that she was just getting old and didn't want to do it anymore. She'd raced since she was a teenager and was ready for the next chapter instead of the grind of professional racing. That's kind of the narrative we believed. But upon analyzing the details of this, again, random news story, it actually starts to paint a bit of a different picture. Nature's Bakery, at least what they've alleged, is that Danica was a diva and basically enabled by her team who just put up with it. Others, I presume, eventually caught wind of this, and she merely ran out of opportunities and was basically forced into retirement. I know that probably comes across as a bold thing to say, but I'm not exactly pulling things out of my ass here. Both the initial complaint from Stuart Haas Racing, as well as the counterclaim by Nature's Bakery, are available online. I was able to find them just by googling the various names that I thought would be involved with this, as well as the PDF file extension, and they showed up on like an NBC Sports WordPress VIP server. So I've read through both of them. Remember, these guys settled out of court, so this doesn't necessarily mean one side is being more truthful than the other. I just think it's an interesting find most people have never seen, and it's cool to read through some of the more detailed parts of it that the news didn't cover, and form your own opinion, basically. As a random NASCAR fan, after reading both sides of the issue, um, from Stuart Haas Racing as well as Nature's Bakery, I was actually left under the impression that NASCAR coverage at the time this was all occurring gave their own summary that intentionally ignored a few elements of the story, presumably to protect Danica's reputation. What Nature's Bakery alleges regarding Danic Patrick is not, like, going to cancel her or anything like that. But what I noticed in their um, complaint, or their counter-complaint, I guess I should say, is that they presented a very realistic portrayal of a driver who was just interested in doing the bare minimum necessary to milk the company for money, and Nature's Bakery just wasn't having it. They weren't about to be walked all over by a celebrity. Um, it's a realistic portrayal of a never-meet-your-heroes kind of situation, and NASCAR at the time did not need that. TV ratings were slumping, um, tracks were having to pull out grandstands at some of their bigger facilities, um, and then you have one of the sports superstars not really being a nice person behind the scenes and basically just trying to milk unsuspecting companies for the bare minimum. Um, wasn't a good look. So to set the scene, it's late 2016, Nature's Bakery just wants to back out because Danica wasn't a good brand rep. That's it. That's what kicks the whole thing off. At some point in 2016 after the Homestead race, Nature's Bakery actually do sit down and send an email off to SHR saying, hey, we want out of this NASCAR Cup Series deal. It's not working for us. It's not making us any money at all, basically. And Danica's not the greatest brand ambassador, and here's a list of reasons why. Um, Stuart Haas is actually quite blindsided by this. They have no idea this is coming. Obviously, this is a multi-million dollar company we're dealing with here, so this email wasn't just fired off willy-nilly at some odd hour in the evening with no links to anything. Nature's Bakery came to Danica and SHR and basically said, we take issue with these specific Facebook posts and these specific Instagram posts because in the contract you signed with us, you're not to promote a competitor's product, regardless of what it is. You know, if you're sponsored by Coke, you're not to be seen drinking Pepsi. It's just how this stuff works at this level. One of the posts they actually took issue with and considered to be a competitor's product was Danica Patrick's own homemade chocolate salty balls. And in a scenario that's too ridiculous for South Park, maybe it's not, someone at SHR was forced to track down Danica Patrick, one of the most famous athletes in North America at the time, 
and pull her into his office and say, Danica, listen, you cannot post about your chocolate salty balls on Instagram anymore. You got it? This is what a professional NASCAR Cup Series team was arguing about with their sponsor in 2016. Serious. It's right there. Moving away from chocolate salty balls, let's talk about money. And this is where I feel things get realistically off the rails here. Basically, in Nature's Bakery's counterclaim against SHR, they say from the early meetings with SHR, SHR was saying that they would get a 4-1 to return on investment from whatever they put into Danica's Cup team. This is completely insane. Nature's Bakery is a fig bar and a granola bar brand. They are not Budweiser. They are not Doritos, where if you have a Danica Patrick special edition Doritos bag, that thing is just going to fly off the shelves because like it's kind of cool. This is granola bars. Stuart Haas basically ignored all that and said, yeah, whatever money you give us, we'll just, we'll just turn into four times whatever you gave us. This is not feasible. NASCAR at the time was ripping out grandstands. Teams were having trouble selling sponsor slots for all 38 races. And apparently SHR was just smiling and nodding, being like, yeah, absolutely. Like, if you sponsor Danica, just prints money. Insane stuff. Now, given what I've just said, there are still ways to kind of make that work. Even if nobody knows what Nature's Bakery is, SHR was promoting Danica as this very social media savvy um, millennial female racer with just an army of passionate fans. And whatever product she ended up slinging, especially if it's yours her army of fans would just immediately become obsessed with. Nature's Bakery found out the hard way that this was complete bullshit. Um, they ended up counting individually every single post she made on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter throughout the 2016 calendar year, and basically found out that Nature's Bakery posts were less than 2% of what she was posting, and she was so busy blogging all the time and just posting random shit that anytime she would post about Nature's Bakery, it would just get buried by other stuff. Further compounding this issue is that Danica would just straight up tell Nature's Bakery no sometimes. Which, like, dude, they are paying you $15 million to run your cup car. All you have to do is make an Instagram post being like, hey, um, my homies came out with a new flavor of Fig Bar this summer. It's called, like, Summer Berry Blast or something dumb like that. Um, Go buy it. And she would still say no. And then the Nature's Bakery reps would have to get into a pissing match with Danica's reps at, um, what is it called here, True Speed or whatever her label is. Um, and they'd offer a compromise being like, well, Danica won't post on her Instagram account, um, your new fig bar flavor. So, um, what we can do as a compromise is she has this little Facebook page called Danica racing incorporated that she hasn't run since like 2005 that has a thousand Facebook fans. We can post it on that instead. And nature's bakery is like, that is not what we signed up for. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Now, this in particular isn't just hearsay, because inside the counterclaim that Nature's Bakery submitted, um, there's actually a screenshot of the email exchange here, um, where they basically come to Danica's rep and are like, hey, like, is she going to post about us on Instagram today? And the rep basically replies back saying, yeah, we don't, we don't, can't guarantee that, because Danica just kind of does whatever the fuck she wants and deal with it. Fuck you. Um, and Nature's Bakery, you know, as you can imagine, is pretty fucking pissed off about this, um, and they rightfully draw attention to how, you know, in other Instagram posts Danica makes, um, she happily promotes her clothing line, her book that was coming out at the time, um, but she can't find any time at all to promote the primary sponsor of her NASCAR Cup Series team, which is keeping her in this industry for anywhere between 15 and 17 million a year. Crazy. Now, this is probably, at least in my opinion, the main sore spot that developed between Nature's Bakery and Stuart Haas Racing. Um, I believe Nature's Bakery just kind of went into this and was expecting to be like, hey, you know, can we get a bit more activity on the Instagram front? Like, it's our summer, you know, special flavor coming out. And they were probably hoping to hear something back like, yeah, you know, Danica will have a story up by the end of the week or whatever. Or, you know, we're going to post, you know, make a post on Thursday and then it'll be up for a few days. Whatever. What apparently ended up happening is that Stuart Haas would just reply to them and be like, yeah, we can't control what she does on social media. We actually have trouble controlling her on social media. And this is what you signed up for, homie. Just deal with it. Nature's Bakery is obviously quite upset because they're paying this girl $17 million a year to race their car, and she can't even make a fucking Instagram post. It's pathetic. Um, and they even go into really pedantic details about just being seen at the track walking around with a fig bar. Apparently, they paid for this just to be like, hey, you know how drivers walk around with like bottles of Coke just because they're sponsored by Coke? Can you walk around with our fig bars and like hand them out to kids during autograph sessions? Apparently, she wasn't even wanting to do this. Just ridiculous. Like, this is such a basic thing. And they just 
straight out write that verbatim um, in their uh, counterclaim. You know, Nature's Bakery expected and paid to see Patrick occasionally walking around the pit at race weekend with a Nature's Bakery fig bar in her hand. Probably just, again, to hand out to little kids or whatever. That rarely happened. Race fans on TV um, would instead see her with a bottle of Coke or Coke Zero in her hand, which was another sponsor of Patrick's and basically a conflict of interest. So, again, what are these guys paying for here? What I found really cool in this counterclaim from Nature's Bakery is that they actually had some level of self-awareness. These guys were, they're not a small business, but they were just getting into big money sports sponsorships. It was the first time they'd ever done something like this, and they knew that. They're really smart about this. So they specifically requested Stuart Haas Racing to hire someone for probably like a part-time wage um, to be like, hey, can you just oversee like the basic day-to-day -day stuff that might pop up regarding sponsorship? Like, for example, and they insert this into the counterclaim here, they found that on NASCAR.com's official website in 2016, Danica's car photo was wrong. It was the Tax Act car. Tax Act was only on the car for like three or four races. They would have preferred, if they're spending all this money, for the picture of Danica's car on NASCAR.com to be the Nature's Bakery car. They couldn't do that. That was too hard for them. Again, Nature's Bakery was really not asking for much, and they had a lot of self-awareness when getting into the stuff. They're just like, hey, can you hire someone for like a, a part-time wage to take care of like all the dumb pedantic sponsorship shit so we're getting you know our money's worth for the $17 million we've spent on this girl this season? All you have to do is go through dumb shit like, hey, the program for the Brickyard 400, Danica's is in the wrong fire suit. Could you please update the photo to um, the Nature's Bakery fire suit because that's who sponsors her this season? Nope, couldn't do that. That was too hard. Now, why is this all a big deal? Um, because at the end of the day, um, Nature's Bakery is arguing that when they entered the sponsorship agreement with Danica and SHR back in 2015, Stuart Haas did tell them that, yeah, you know, our driver on social media, we actually do have control of her and we kind of dictate what she can post and things like that. It's a very professional run operation. Obviously, Nature's Bakery found out the opposite when they actually started dealing with her. And that is probably why parts of the story were not really reported fully back when this was breaking because they were basically saying that when you get involved with the Danica machine your money is really not going as far as you think it will this is not a professional operation this is someone who's basically just a diva and just does whatever the fuck she wants and we don't ever feel like telling her no and nature's bakery at the end of the day was basically left blowing 17 million on a girl who couldn't even make an instagram post when requested so you have this company brand new to NASCAR who's ready and willing to jump into the sport and invest a ton of money into it over a period of three years, I think the initial deal was. There's no return on investment. The driver couldn't be asked to do the most mundane of social media posts and instead blogged about homemade cooking recipes and yoga instead. And the team admitted to them that she basically just does whatever the fuck she wants whenever and you just have to deal with it. As history would play out, Danica Patrick would end up retiring at the conclusion of the 2017 NASCAR Cup Series season. And I'm of the opinion that parts of the story and some of the finer details that maybe didn't even make it into these various documents circulated within the racing industry. And she didn't really retire, but rather she was forced out because no one wanted to deal with this anymore. What I find quite beautiful about this story is how this all ended for everybody involved. Danica Patrick in 2024 runs a podcast where she talks about lizard people. Stuart Haas Racing is folding at the end of 2024. Nature's Bakery, by comparison, sold to Mars Candy Company at the conclusion of 2020 for $400 million.